Dean, would you like to start um, saying a few words about yourself for people who don't know you? I can say a few words about myself. Um, I'm Dean. I am co-founder of The Armoring Arts and the founder of LoveCore. I've been studying humans and myself for pretty much all of my adult life, really. I started when I was about 17. And actually, my, my start was my mom gave me the book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, which then started me into studying the way to reprogram uh, subconscious mind. So that was my initiation into what makes us tick as humans and how do we work and what is going on in this machine that we call body. So I've been kind of digging into myself from different points, from communication to sexuality, to the armoring, to shamanism, to energetics, to men's work, to lots of meditation vipassanas. Lots of lots, lots and lots and lots of decades and decades of non-stop, pretty much full-time uh, working on myself. I consider myself as a kind of a full-time uh, practitioner. So this is a little bit about myself. If you have any further questions or if you want to know more, please ask. But for now, Matt, why don't you say a few mm. words about yourself? Yeah, thank you so much. So my name is Matt. I'm German born, living in Sweden at the moment. I am a de-armoring practitioner since 2010. Um, I'm a sexual body worker. Um, I'm working with uh, sexual empowerment work. Uh, I'm super interested and curious about the nervous system and uh, how we as humans tick and engage and relate. Um, I'm interested in all kind of um, physical, emotional, neurological, mental, spiritual engagements that we all have, have how we want to relate with the world. Uh, I have created, after being six years in mentorship with Betty Martin and the Wheel of Consent, and in my perception upgraded version of the Wheel of Consent that I call the Somatic Consent Engagement System, that is applicable in individual engagement and in relationships with couples. It's literally a map or a, a, a blueprint. And I do as well couples retreats and um, uh, uh, trainings for facilitator and practitioners. And I'm uh, a colleague from the N in the De Armoring Arts. I'm a guest teacher there and I teach consent, communication, touch, nervous system, trauma, and all the kind of stuff. And I'm so happy to be here and see you guys. Thank you, Matt. So we're just gonna ask people that just joined in, please turn the cameras on, we'd love to see your faces. It doesn't matter if you're not having a best hair day, but uh, we'd love to see your face. Maria, I get it that you don't know how to do it, it's totally okay. Like it's not a must, it's a request. Yeah. And, and if you don't know how to do it, there's on the left-hand corner, if you're on your computer, there's a little camera sign and there's where you can choose a camera. And on your phone, you need to tap on your screen and there's as well a, a button where you can unlock your camera. And um, it's easier to relate with people when we have face-to-face -face contact. Yeah. So yeah. I would love to hear from you actually before we move any further. Like, what is body reading? Let's have a little, like, group chat. Just unmute yourself and throw a couple of words, one word, two words, sentence, two sentences. Just quickly, let's kind of start getting this group of people who are present here into some kind of a understanding of what we each think about what body reading is all about. So let's hear it. Anybody can start. Yeah, to me, it's about just... Uh attuning into what the guy's body is telling me what what he's feeling okay so. next thank you jonathan yeah henry <clears throat> yes well, for, for me uh it's just about to uh to have a go or no go uh for interacting go the... or no go for interacting yes can you say a little bit more i mean i get it but just a little bit more uh 
uh, I'm very curious of uh, to 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 know about uh, signs that uh, uh, tells me or that um, that um, uh, the other the other people is is not uh, doesn't want to to communicate or is fed up with uh, uh, current communication or. Okay. So I, I like to, to recognize those uh, kind of patterns. Thank you. Somebody else, what is body reading for you? How do you kind of see it as a concept? Uh, hello? I'm uh, sorry, yes. I, cannot, uh, I have a problem with my camera. I cannot uh, change the... Sorry. Um, for me, uh, you can get information about someone's current situation but sometimes if you look a little bit closer you can see uh, maybe deeper uh, messages for someone's uh, situation not only current thank you somebody else uh i can go uh -huh. For me, as it, it is known that each muscle has a specific uh, psychological function, I would say it can be a way to um, have a clue on each uh, on the, the the defense mechanisms of each person, or where there are more open codings to to relate or closed codings. Yeah. Okay, thank you all. Any more? What do we think? Veronique, just speak. Pain. Say again. Pain. Pain. What about pain? Well, body reading is also whether there's, you know, if there's a pain somewhere in the body. That's also a way to um, um, identify, maybe, or focus on that area. So okay. it's reading the body through pain, basically, or also unbalance, the body unbalance, you know, not being straight or whatever, you know, tension. Being, physically. Yeah, physically as well. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Any more? Yes? Um, I would say it's like the subconscious, like what you're giving off subconsciously, the stuff that you don't even know, but other, like if other people are paying attention, they can see yeah, mm -hmm. great. Any more? Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, I can say something. Um, I think it's also about the uh, feeling into the energy uh, uh, that is going on uh, between uh, the two people or yeah and noticing what is happening in my body and that will also give me a clue of what is happening to the other person great mm -hmm. great angle any more anything I love your answers they're uh, they're great <laughs> yeah. yeah like i'm almost we're almost kind of out of job here which is gonna have to after this we're gonna say okay well nice to meet you then bye <laughs> And we do it all day long, each one of us. Just like when you go and buy the piece of bread at the bakery, this just like <laughs> you do it even if you don't know it. All right, let's hear from a few more. Hello. Hey, hey. Um, I would say it's like reading uh, different levels of the body that exist, like emotional, spiritual energetic physical which are all connected actually and out of that you can read the body great mm -hmm. so the picture is kind of getting bigger we're kind of inputting all right let's have a few more let's see how how big can we build this picture to be how complete can we make it for me it's uh it's the juxtaposition of the chronicness of a personality which includes the defenses but it's it's the structure of who we are which is manifested in the way that our face is structured the way that the muscles in the face have developed the whole body especially when you see someone walking 
but also the momentary feeling of that person. So it's it's both at the same time. You see the personality and you see how they're feeling in this moment. Mm. Um, the body posture, the breathing and so on in that particular moment, which might be different in a different moment if they feel differently, but the background structure stays the same. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? Uh, I, I thought about that perhaps we do body reading but we are quite unaware of it now uh, because then we meet up the people meet up the person uh, if someone uh, behave in a certain way and we approach them in a certain way so yeah that's my thought about it mm -hmm. well, thank you Emma. somebody else you can also go twice you know you don't have to if you spoke already it's, you, you're cool to speak again if there's another kind of, pew, pew, you know. How do we see body reading? I would like to add uh, the energetic level. Uh, and this is actually what I'm more curious about to learn, uh, but to see what, where the, the energy is flowing or is, is stuck in the body. And I, I, I've seen in, in so many sessions and, and seeing the facilitator saying, okay, this is where this is stuck and, or the body is calling me to, to touch there or to go there. And for me, it's amazing because I cannot really feel into, into this kind of, of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Any more? Yeah, me. Uh, for me, it's also to, to see where the energy is flowing. As uh, jo Joao, I don't know how to pronounce your Joao. name, Joao said, and where, where the trauma happened, how the person compensated, compensate, I can't even say the compensate. word, compensated their, their trauma and what age and everything, where, the, where something happened. Cool. So, yeah. It's a bigger picture uh -huh. and it helps me to see uh, how how the person is feeling at the moment subconsciously not consciously because uh, I, I like to go to subconscious and see that bigger picture to, mm. to their body to their body mm. Mm -hmm. yeah anyone else let's dig even deeper <clears throat> body reading the whole concept of body reading I'm looking for, uh, am I invited or am I not invited as an overall? And and I also know within 30 seconds or something, whether we're going to have an issue with boundaries. I don't know where I get it from, but I just pick it up just like that. And when you say uh, boundaries, uh, in one context, are you talking about? Uh, whether there is a misconception about what the massage is about and are you talking about the massage okay yeah yeah and uh, i also have a lot of clients that do not tell the truth about why they're there um mm -hmm. and maybe they don't know that could also be a factor but Often. i'm very aware that you know that to trust myself mm -hmm. great anymore so now we're getting into like you're coming from the massage perspective. Let's hear in your life, like, I don't know what to do for a living or your kind of interest in life, but where would you, where could you do more with the depth of body reading and what situation, what, um, yeah, where in your life could you do more of it? I would like to add to that as well, you know, the the level of body reading is very much dependent on the context of the engagement, you know, if you are going on the street and you have somebody uh, approaching you and uh, you just like start sensing violence, that's a good indicator of body reading and it's a good idea to change the street to the other side. Um, or as I said that when you go um, to the bakery and buy a piece of bread, you know, just like, how do we engage? How do we relate in the moment? And what's the intention when it comes to proximity, when it comes to connection? And that might be a professional setup, that might be, 
Is there a hands-on or physical contact involved? Is there just emotional proximity or is there just a mental conversation and there and, and you are aware of that the person is actually completely somewhere else? So just like body reading is in my perception so much related to the dynamic how we engage with a person in the present moment like we do that here so i read all the time and i just like track and see and feel just like this entire room of 20 people simultaneously i mean that's a good one you just kind of added another level to it so we can body read each other one-to-one -one. we can also body read as matt said in one hit in one millisecond the whole room or the whole wherever you are, you know, as many people around. So like there is individual and there is group mm -hmm. that we can read into. So tell me more, like in what context could you see in your life that I don't want to say you lack it, but you lack it, the depth of reading, the depth of, um, yeah, Rima. So, for example, in my coaching sessions, I feel like I could really pay more attention to the energetic shifts, especially when they are subtle, so that I know when to intervene, when to challenge maybe a little bit more, when to stop. I think they're great. Mm -hmm. And so obviously you're already using body reading because we have to. So what are your tools or what's your kind of approach to it are you on a kind of a more of a shy spectrum and you're just kind of observing or are you more of a to the front and asking probing looking you know what i mean like um into them what's your kind of way i'm now slowly opening up to the world of probing and being a little bit more courageous and challenging okay I'm very afraid of stepping on somebody's toes or or unintentionally crossing some boundaries. So I'd rather go slow than, hmm. yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Open your, yeah. yes, Veronique. I would like to say I'm working with okay. people from different parts of the world. So I have lots of Asians and lots of, I don't know, from all over. And actually, Actually, one part of the body reading is the same, like humanity, but different cultures have different, I don't know how to explain it. You have to be really cautious to read groups or bodies of different cultures. It's actually a little bit different. And I have to sense kind of boundaries. I have to sense myself and them and, um, each culture, it's a little bit different. I have to adjust. And mm. I um, i don't know, it's really interesting. I've never you thought about it. You have to speak different it. language. Not languages, bodies. Um, I'm talking about the body language. You need to speak I'm a different language. I'm talking about the body language, yeah. Yeah, and, different, you need uh, to speak different languages with your body. You have to speak with different cultures. You need to speak different languages. And they have different perspectives, different yep. boundaries, different... Uh, closeness or how apart you are so it's really interesting yeah when you pay attention to body reading with all these different nations i really mm. like it mm. it's you, really sir. enriching um the life the, my life actually mm. because it's so different and um, so you clearly like it I really like it because yeah. then you can, I, if I do the body reading, I can connect much easier with different cultures. It doesn't matter from where somebody comes because I'm conscious about it and I'm looking at the bodies. And sometimes they do something totally different that I would do, but I can feel it in my body. I can read the bodies and then I can sense what, where, are, where are they? So it's, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else, Veronique, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was listening to Rima and to the questions you were asking, and uh, it just dawned on me that uh, there's also a difference whether you meet people for the first time or whether you know the people. Um, because there's a connection when you know the people, the connection is already there. And um, 
when you don't know somebody, it's um, <clears throat> more the observation, trying to put the little antennas out to to feel the person. But now, as when Rima said that she was just coming out, you know, to kind of uh, be more in the probing side, I just realized that my approach is um, more direct. Um, and um, but there's a way to do it that is not aggressive, if you see what I mean. So it's it's kind of a an art in some way where you do it via humor, you do it with a smile, but you still say what you want to say. And when you have a perception, you don't really know if it's going through your own filters and if what you're perceiving from the other person is actually correct. So there's a validation. I use communication a lot, as you know now, because I speak a lot, right? So um, to try to validate what um, what I feel, just to be sure that I'm not in my own interpretation of stuff, yep. which, we, yeah, which we often are because we're human yep. beings, right? So, yep. cool. um, thank you. So that's also an interesting point of actually uh, observing reality and then testing to see if you're correct or not. That's also a great point. Thank you for that. So, any more? How would you use it or where would you use it more in your life? For me, uh, it's very interesting uh, because I'm an infant massage instructor. Uh, Sorry, it's I didn't another, understand your word. Uh, an infant massage instructor. Oh, okay. For, for baby, babies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, very interesting because uh, there's no verbal communication. So... Uh, the whole uh, uh, approach is um, to observe uh, and find uh, ways to communicate with the baby and uh, observe uh, how they move, how they react in uh, the muscles. And uh, for me, it's a very, very interesting field. And I have gained a lot from that uh, as a, pers a perspective. Mm -hmm. And also uh, a very obvious <laughs> uh, aspect of life where we uh, observe how people uh, speak with their bodies is uh, our sexual life. And uh, it's also very, uh, we take it uh, as granted, but we have to to be more conscious and uh, learn how to speak with our bodies. Hmm. Yeah, and do, do we want to slowly start to just like unravel our own secrets, what we do and how we do that, and that we can maybe um, add to the of people's um, experience a little bit of our experience be my guest yeah would, would you like me to start or would you like to start no you can go okay wonderful i loved all your perceptions and they are all all great and uh and and, and right and we all need that and when when i talk about body reading specifically as a, a geek of you know of the nervous system i just started studying in 2015 uh the polyvagal the uh, theory from stephen porges and it's literally based on the social engagement system so the ventral vagus nerve that is literally part of our facial expression that's literally the way how we detect the world in terms of safe or not safe so that we can literally engage with the world and there is something in our all nervous system that calls neuroception. And that neuroception is detecting in splits of a second if we are feeling safe or not safe with another person. And our entire personal structure and personal uh, way of engaging with the world is built on from early age, from early development, how we body read. So is our is our in 
um, environment? Is it safe? Can we uh, express ourselves or do we have to establish a survival mechanism uh, or do we need to need to appease or oppress or have some strategies to get our needs met? So, so we have all different ways of engaging when it comes to uh, a body reading. And I like to speak from terms of uh, neurological feedback loops. And uh, so the way how we literally pick up different cues in somebody else's expression. And some of you said that already, that can be on an emotional level. Can we feel in ourself what's going on in the other person? Can we be empathetic with another person? Can we see kind of uh, muscle twitches in the system or facial expression or eye twinkings or, you know, different, different ways? And then there is a part of that I'm really passionate about that the so-called mirror neurons so when we are in proximity with another person that the that, that the neurons there in somebody else's body starts to fire that there are mirror neurons in our own body that are in correlation with other people's uh, neurons and this is is not happening on a rational or on a mental level even as well that sometimes when you have somebody you are really in synchronicity you just recognize just like oh my god just like somebody is answering a question where you haven't even asked anything have you have you noticed that when this is happening somebody you're really close with or for example women are together in the same room for or, or in the same place for a long time and they start to menstruate or <laughs> all together at the same time so this is all kind of on different levels how the body engage and read each other different dynamics in there and um yeah i'm very passionate about that and specifically when it comes to physical body work or energetic body work or emotional body work or any kind of coaching that this body reading is key otherwise we just like you know, read from a book that has nothing to do with the moment. And it's just like present moment engagement on all levels of awareness. Dian, you want to tap into that? Yeah, I'm going to basically, I love working with you because we are so different. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Like my, my take on body reading is completely from like from over there, you know? <laughs> so I came to body reading out of so it's all through experience. I'm not really a scientist. I don't know anything about nervous system and, and neurons. I do know about how I feel and how I sense reality around me. So I came into it because I started this life, um, like I'm talking about a teenage kind of time, so confused, so choked up, so unexpressed, so unable to be myself. Um, in, in pretty much any area, every area of life. So it forced me to really start digging deep into like, who am I and how do I work and how do you work and how do you work and how do we meet and how do we talk and how do we, but through experience, through life. And then the journey took me uh, in my late thirties, took me through Biodanza. I don't know how many of you people know about Biodanza. Biodanza is a fantastic system of movement based uh, education. It's not really dancing, but it's through movement and dance. We get to know each other and oneself. And so it was through training of that where I actually started reading bodies and reading myself and reading subtle impulses and reading like socially understanding the dynamics between people, what makes, you know, if I'm like this, how do you respond? If I'm like this, how do you respond? If I'm like this, how do you respond? And so changing and shifting myself, I started playing myself like a radio, like a TV tuner. So I would tune myself to different frequency and become a completely different guy and then approach life, approach people in many different situations. And I did this for decades, for a very long time practicing putting myself into action on, on different changing the pitch of my voice changing the energy changing the emotions in me changing 
speed of my uh, speech, speed of my movement, and testing, 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 testing with people to see how people get affected and how do I get affected. And what that led me into, it was coming closer and closer to understanding where, what levels of existence we actually operate on. And uh, it's true that different cultures have different languages, but it's also true that underneath all of that, we speak the same language. And I actually learned it from babies, from children, studying kids, looking at them. I mean, they are masters at body language. They communicate so eloquently, so such a vast variety of vocabulary they have. I mean, I was blown away. My daughter, when she was tiny, she was like speaking, I don't know how many words, but there was like eloquent language for all of their parents, you know what that's like. They're, they're super clear, there is no confusion. If they, you know, they're very specific about what they like, what they don't like, how they like it, it's just like, wow. So studying children was one big way that actually allowed me to really observe, we all born with it, there is absolutely nothing new. We all have it. The only thing we need to do is return to innocence, return to actually using what is innate, it's innate in us. We, 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 we are hardwired with it, understanding each other, that's what I mean. And then when I started studying communication and a little bit of NLP and stuff like that, I also realized that actually in communication, only about 10% of the message that is transferred between people is actually down to words what I actually say. About 30 or so percent is the tonality of the voice that I say it. And about 50 or 60 percent is the body language. So I was like, hang on a second. So that's why kids are so effective, because all they don't get is they get 90 percent of each other. They only don't get 10 percent, which is I can live with that. So that was also like opening my mind to, OK, so let's stop listening to the words. So when I talk to you, when I talk to people, I don't actually listen to what you say. I listen to how you say it and where does it come from in your body, which chamber of your body projects the, it begins with the idea. And that idea is translated either through mental or through emotional or through energetic body and it's expressed through here and it comes into the world. So I really want to have a finger on the pulse of where are you coming from? What runs you? Are you based in your lower belly or are you based in your root? Are you coming from the survival? So the base chakra will tell me. So if I'm focusing, so this is my study of myself took me through the chakra journey. I kind of dissected myself into levels and I started observing reality from each particular level so that I can understand and learn the language of it and the concepts of it and the, the important parts of life that are governed by that particular level. So when I observe, so if I want to meet you on a base level, I connect with my root, literally, I start feeling my base, my pelvic floor, I relax, and I find a middle ground within me, I find that zero point where I don't shake, I don't move, I'm just stable, and relaxed, and then I feel into you, I sense your root, I just focus on your root, and then I start feeling within my system, are you afraid? Any, so any change in my system is coming from the outside because I know I've just put a finger on my root and my root is steady. Right now it feels a little burning right now. It feels a little pressure because I'm sitting on it. But I'm safe. I'm appropriately placed. And I feel in control of my life. So this is where my root is right this second. So when I start feeling into you on the level of your root, any change that I feel in me is most likely coming from you. And so if I start feeling either fear or uncomfortable, like I don't want to be here, then I don't know, somebody said here, then I need to go and test it. I think Veronique, you said it. And then I ask you, say, hey, I'm starting to feel like I'm in a wrong place. Do you maybe need to move? And then I watch the response, like immediate gut, like millisecond response of what I get. Is that yes or no? Is it confirmation or is it shock? Or is it true or is it not true? So I combine reading through the visual, sensory, emotional, energetic, mental with what I see. And so this is on the level of the root. 
the root would be dealing with uh, stability in life, would be dealing with finances, with house, with appropriate placement. Do I actually want to be here? Do you want to be here? Or would you rather be half a meter to your left, where suddenly you're going to go and relax? As soon as I see your shoulders dropping, your whole body relaxing, now the root is relaxed. So this is reading on the root level. Then I go into the second center. Matt, I'm sorry, can I just carry on because this is going to take a little just time. Just go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm preparing here behind the scene. All right, all right. So when I start reading on the second center, so this is going to be the waters of the body. This is going to be the whole emotionality relating sexuality. This is going to be uh, like the glue, the, you know? And so again, put a finger on a pulse on myself in my second center. How do I feel? Feels relaxed, waters are calm, you know, nice and deep lake, for example. And then I feel into you or in the room. And I just sense the impulses. So it's like a shock comes into me from the outside and I read, I feel like, what is it? Oh, there's like the ripples, there is energetics, there is some things. And so then I feel like a tentacles go out into, into that field of connection and I read you from there. Then I go into the third center, into the solar plexus. Again, relax it. So this is gonna be the sun, this is gonna be the power, this is gonna be the ego, this is gonna be the mind, this is gonna be the I know, I know, I'm hungry, I, I lives there. And so if I can just relax myself, exhale, relax, and then feel into you, immediately I'm gonna start picking up on the fact, are you self-centered? Are you able to hold yourself? Are you spineless or are you spine full? Are you able to? stand straight or are you collapsing in your solar plexus and there is no power in your life are you confident in yourself are you a tyrant are you or have you been beaten so much in your life that you're kind of broken so all of those things are going to come through the third center so then i'm going to raise my consciousness into my heart and start feeling the connection with oh yeah the third center also is going to be the family so the connection with the family the second one is going to be the sexual connections and kind of the flirty the third center is the friends and family. So I'm also going to read into that. Like, what's your kind of, where are you based in, on that level of, of your life? When I come to the heart, I'm going to start feeling, are you connected? Are you alive? Are you numb? Are you a zombie? Is your soul connected or are you hiding? Are you present? You know, are you cold or are you warm? So this is going to be literally, physically, it's energy coming in and, and sensing, feeling these things through my body. When it comes to the throat, I'm going to be looking at your expression in your life. Are you expressed? Where do you speak from? Do you speak like this? 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 Like, where is your voice coming from? Because that's going to tell me heaps of things about your emotional makeup, about your current state. It's going to tell me huge amounts. So this is going to, I'm going to look into what is your life like? Do you live a life that you were born to live? Are you actually unexpressed do you feel like you should be doing more in your life but you're not which is going to be the tightness in your throat it's so many things that will come from here then i'm going to focus from here and observe from here so are you actually conceptually awake am i talking to awakened spirit or are you asleep is there sparkle in your mind or are you basic there's nothing right or wrong but it's just isness about life so the reason i'm sharing all of these things is because the body reading for me is a definite art with definite science attached to it. So it's a merger of the whole system and understanding how I work and therefore how we all work. And then learning different languages and learning different ways and learning different experimenting, non-stop experiment, 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 endlessly in order to know where I'm at and where you are. And then we go into listening. And so there's another whole huge thing about hearing and listening. Hearing is ability to hear you. Listening is I'm going to start manipulating reality and being a magician. Through my listening, I can start influencing energies around me. I'm going to, for example, right now I'm listening for sharp expression. This is where my focus is. I'm tuned in. Like me, my radio is sharp expression and clarity. So when I listen for that, you have almost, you, you do have a choice not to, 
engage, but because I'm so focused on sharp expression and clear, clear expression and, and sharp listening, I'm inviting your mind, inviting your presence to follow me. So I'm commanding the room or the communication by my listening. Listening is ability to switch on and off to different frequencies, different ideas. I could be listening for lies, so then I start hearing lies. I could be listening for love, and all I want is just love. I could be listening for anger, and I just want anger. And so this is the way of, so the concept of listening and hearing are very, very different. Hearing is just ability to get things in, into my ear. Through listening, it's an active manipulation of energy. I become a magician. We all are. We're all doing it 24-7, non-stop. We cannot stop listening. We're always creating our life. Except the change, am I conscious of it? What am I creating? Or am I unconscious what I'm creating? That's the only difference. But we're always creating this. We cannot stop. So can you see what I mean? This like body reading is a massive, massive subject for me that I love and I'm passionate about it. And I'm super happy to share way more and longer and always. Uh, but for now, I'm going to put a pause and, and, and I need some input and, and awesome. probing. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I invite you all to take a deep breath. Ah, give it a sigh or a sound and just put yourself into present again as much as you desire, mm. as much as you like. And I have a question to all of you here in the room. Would you like to become better in body reading? Then raise your hand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I have prepared a little uh, keynote slides. This is kind of my secret of 20 years of exploring and discovering and teaching and of educating. And this as a, as a, it's, it's not a secret, but it's my gift that I would like to contribute here today that you might get a little benefit out of that. And some of you have done that with me already and now what I'm aiming for, but this is a lifelong process and that's my kind of contribution. So I invite you for a few moments to take something in your hand, whatever that is. Yeah. So I have here a piece of wood and you just lean back and you just get really comfortable. Yeah. And the invitation is, um, I call that the hand meditation, and that you move your hand over this object that you have here in your hand and just feel the kind of sensory haptic experience there on your skin. Like I'm looking for a kind of a tinglish, pleasant sensation. Yeah. And important here is, that you are in charge of the movement of your hands. I'm not telling you how to move or what to feel, but just be in connection with this neurological feedback of you are in action towards the felt sense of pleasure in your skin. This is one of the most profound neurological imperatives in our nervous system, in our body. We all have that so to say, is our first survival mechanism of um, touching and feeling and making connection. Yeah? The important piece here is whatever you do to that thing, it doesn't matter what you feel, if you feel kind of strong pressure or you feel tinglish or you feel pokey or scratchy or whatever you feel, there's nothing coming back. You don't get any response of that thing you're having there in your hand is completely, utterly, only your experience in your skin. Doesn't mean anything. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just one nerve ending in your hands is connecting to nerve ending in your brain and to a specific nerve ending in your brain to your feeling center. So when we do that for a moment and just feeling, you will come in connection with some feelings and emotions. Or you have certain belief systems or thought patterns. Something will come up when you do that. But you're not getting anything back from that object. 
Yeah. It's an internal process that has just to do with your own feedback loop in yourself, independent from anybody or anywhere. And it's either on when you touch it and when you feel it, or it's off when you don't touch it. On or off. It's This is how simple it is. And I invite you for a few more seconds to stay there and just to feel it and just recognize how simple that is. So simple that the mind even can't grasp it. Okay. So let your breath flow. And just feel for this few seconds remaining, just your skin, why you are in movement. And you will have individual responses. As many different people here in the room, there are as many different responses in your feeling center, in your nervous system, in your physical expression. Okay, then I invite you to slow down till you stop. Stay there just for a moment. And then opening up your eyes and bring your attention back to the screen. So, if you believe it or not, this little exercise where nothing is coming back when we're talking about body reading, neurological feedback loops, or mirror neurons, this very exercise that is just you and connection with your hands is the is my key, is my key component to become a master in body reading. And I want to tell you why that is. And I've prepared some slides. It takes about five minutes to maximum to guide you through. And then we just want to open up the microphone for questions and answers. Are you ready for that? All right. Okay, let's do it. I hope everything goes well here in the in the back end with the tech. All right. So can you see this direct and indirect pleasure map? Yeah, wonderful. Just checking in. So put that in the right place. Okay, so this is what we just have done. You know, you have had something in your hands. And you felt literally um, your movement, your action in your fingers, in your limbs, in your hands. And then when you start moving, you start activating little nerves in your hands and you start feeling. And what that does, it goes into your um, feeling center or in your pleasure center where you just start to activate the sense of joy, maybe. yeah, and. This is what I call, uh, call the direct route of pleasure. So you go into an action and feel something. So that's your action for your own benefit. And that's the, the core component of our all way of touching and feeling if another person is involved or not. So when we are in this place and we have some issues around that through our upbringing, through our conditioning, through society, through being with ex-lovers and partners, that something is wrong when we touch another person, that we can't feel anything. You know what I mean? So you touch somebody else just to feel for yourself. So the question is here, and just for a minute or so, why would that be difficult for you individually to feel for yourself if you would touch another person? So please feel free to either write it into the chat or open up your microphone and just say the word or whatever the feeling or the sensation is. Why would that be wrong to touch another person and feel for yourself? The first thing that comes in mind. 
being selfish, Matt? Selfish, yes. Uh, Janine says trauma, yes. So, so you 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 still have this thing in your hands and feeling it, and now imagine you touch another person feeling unsafe, don't have consent. Yes. Rejection or fear of rejection. Yes. The fear of overcrossing the other's boundaries. Yes. And if touching the object, I was uh, afterwards when when it, we came to the screen, I was thinking, was I thinking of taking advantage from this piece of cord <laughs> that I was touching? Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Lack of closeness experience, yes. Not not knowing that's even existing. Or so we have all a package there. Why this can be difficult. Yeah, And the more we're having these blockages there emotionally, mentally, and belief systems, the more difficult we will have when it comes to body reading. Because we have a certain way of obstacles in our nervous system when it comes to putting our hands on somebody else's body because we start thinking what the person will feel, what the person will uh, think if the person thinks we're doing something right, we're doing something wrong. So we're just creating a story and a belief system around that what's coming back or what needs to come back. This is not body reading. We Most of the time we, we, we judge ourselves that when we're feeling ourselves on somebody else that we're doing something wrong. Even if it's in micro movements and we are conditioned about that. So we all have that. There's nothing wrong or bad about that. Yes, to two degree. So, so uh, Janine is asking, basically, I'm saying we are my pro uh, projecting or uh, we are uncentered. We are, we are literally, instead of feeling ourselves, maybe we don't have consent or whatever the, the reason is, instead of feeling ourselves, we make it more important what the other person might feel about us, what we do. And when we do that, and when we stuck in there, our capacity of body reading and being neutral about what's coming back is completely blocked. So we're out of the game, literally. So what I want to say here is um, when we touch another person and we have consent in place, we have an agreement for you, in place there is there, there is an intention about what's going to happen it might be a bodywork session it might be the armoring it might be any kind of bodywork whatever you do in your life you get a response back to with the intention to get the best result for the person that you possibly can yeah and this is the idea of the feedback loop. So we're doing something so that something comes back what the person desires yeah, or what we feel is right. And to go deeper into that, we need them both at the same time. We need to be capable of feeling ourselves independently what's coming back and being razor blade sharp about that what is coming back without the need of something is coming back that we want to come back. Yeah? Say this okay. again. So I try to say that again. So when we are in connection with our feelings in our hands, so when we feeling, so to say, muscle texture, or we're just feeling um body temperature or we're feeling kind of the vibration of the body on the cellular structure or we feel the pulse that when we feel that and when we feel ourselves that we're not dependent on that what is coming back because when we're dependent on that what is coming back what we would like to come back we cannot read what is really coming back because it's conflated with 
what we want to come back instead of to feel neutral what is really coming back. <laughs> okay, I stopped the sharing here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing, but like we really need to put a finger on a pulse. Yes, and ask the group. Like, okay, did you get this? So, like, where, where, where are you with it all? Where are you with that? <laughs> Let's go into open questions, and um, that was my contribution. I hope that is beautiful. Is it helpful? Does it resonate with with what we what I was doing? Is it landing somewhere? And. Let's have open questions and answers about body reading. How would you like to have that in your profession, in your life? And where are you stuck with body reading? And wh where do you need support? Let, let's, let's just kind of retrack and let's kind of ground what was just said so that the room actually gets. Also, I want to say uh, we are recording this session. So if you didn't get what Matt just said, that's totally okay. We're going to send out a recording and you're welcome to watch it again and again and again until it actually goes clack, 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 clonk. Yeah. But just for now, let's kind of hear it. Are you, where are you? So I'm lost. Very I'm lost is... because my, my uh, brain structure requires examples rather than concepts. So yes. I can't follow you on what you what you're saying unless you can actually just use an example, whatever the example is for me. Okay, okay. Um, Veronique, I know you are in relationship with Henry, right? Okay, is is that okay when I say that here? Yeah, absolutely. Forgive me if, if it yes. wasn't okay. Sorry. No, then. no, no, no. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. That's okay. Fine. So so just just imagine you have an agreement with Henry that you can touch Henry the way how you touch the object whenever you want to, you can feel him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you would like to get a certain response back that would make you happy. And you just try to touch him with the desire to get that response back. But that's not the response that is coming back. So literally, Henry has a complete different neurological, physical, emotional response that is not that what you desire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you completely dismiss his response and reactions mm -hmm. and make yourself wrong that you have done something bad mm -hmm. that is not in relationship to that what you want. Yeah, because it's unrelated. His response is unrelated to what I was expecting or what I wanted. Right. For for him, not for right, me. Right, for him. right, 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 yeah. right. And then you might would make him wrong that he is not giving back what you were actually yes. intending to do. Yes, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yes. Does it make sense? Clear. Yeah, it okay, does. Good. Okay. Completely. Good. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you for clarifying that, Veronique. Yes. Everybody you. else, is this now where are we like with the understanding of the last whatever half an hour? Questions? Anything I said, anything Matt said? Now we have like 20 minutes left for questions and answers. So please. Janine, please. Um, so if you can feel the object, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're centered enough to just accept what the other person is giving you back. That's true. That's true. So, so when you when you can feel the object, this is the beginning of being capable of feeling. And when you have literally uh, had, let's say, many hours and opportunities to have a proximity with another person that you can, in permission to feel the other person when you have the experience to feel the other person that you are not dependent on that what you want to come back but you have access to the responses that coming back neutral independent from what you want to come back and so you can still stay in connection with your hands so accepting reality instead of trying to yes there are two things here, wait, wait, because what I'm hearing here, there is one thing is actually sensing yourself 
or sensing someone else. The other one is accepting reality because you can also be blocking. You can be sensing something, but not really allowing not yourself. Huh? Not actually intuiting. You might sense it, but you don't know what to no, do. No, no, no. Just it. literally block yourself from accepting that to be reality. Mm. So you completely like there's a disconnect within your nervous system, within your psyche, so that you feel something like, for example, uh, rape. Sometimes uh, a woman's body is responding. Disassociation. So, yeah. So body is feeling something, but actually the spirit, the soul is disconnected because it doesn't want to. So that's like gross example of not accepting. No, I mean, accepting meaning feeling fully and being with. So not accepting is not being with. It's like being disconnected. Yeah. But let's so, the more, the, so thank you for that. Huh? And the more you practice feeling why you are capable of reading what is really coming back, you can drop the entire story that what you want to come back because it has nothing to do with reality. And the more you're capable of feeling yourself, the respond will become a neutral reading of what's really going on. Because it's always a dance. You know, mm -hmm. it's a dance, it's give and take, give yes. and take. It's never one or the other. No, so, so it's more actually like just listening to your intuition and not trying to have it tell you anything specific. Just listen. Right, right. And, and the interesting thing is, and I have seen that in myself and I've seen that in many practitioners I've educated over years is when they actually do something with an agenda of something that they want to come back has nothing to do with body reading. Say this again. So when you do something with an agenda that you want to come back, so, so you, you, have an, you have an agenda of an action that something comes back that gives you gratification, for example, has nothing to do with body reading. Body reading is neutral what the body is responding when you make connection or when you touch or when you see or when you feel. There's no agenda behind that. So we could then say that body reading is just observing reality as it is. There is no agenda. There is no good and bad. There is no judgment. It's just isness about life. Yeah. Like somebody said something and that's what was said. And then afterwards I could interpret it. I could make a meaning or judgment, but body reading is just literally you take a book and you read. And then afterwards you might want to interpret what you read. That's pretty clear to me. All right. Cool. Any Thank more questions? Much. That was good. Anything for the last hour that was said, now it's time to clarify and to... Um... Janet, please. Yeah, I would like to ask uh, Diane in terms of this uh, chakra, um, you know, where you're reading from different places. Uh, just of curiosity, during a session, do you go through all of the chakras? I do it all the time, nonstop, actively right now, and practices 24-7. <laughs> okay. Because it's all, you see, the thing is, it's, and this is where we're slightly changing the subject, going into the present, being present, being present to oneself, life, everything, you. So the body reading for me comes as a, a side effect or as a result of being present to myself. If I'm not present to myself, I can't be present to you, so therefore I cannot read you. So the more I can be present to myself, as many levels simultaneously as I can, that much better I'm going to be at body reading, because I'm going to be connected to life. So in my interpretation of body reading is really connection to life itself. So the practice that I do is to be as present to myself on all the levels as often as I can during the day in my life. And so because also I'm trained for some time, my observation skills are looking for, so you know when I said difference between listening and, and hearing, 
well, I'm always listening for the input and for the truth, for reality, for authenticity, because that's my interest. I'm, I'm focusing on, I want to be real. I want to be real. Uh, I want to be truthful and I want to be authentic. So I'm looking for the same thing in other people. So automatically, because I've been doing it for a while, for me, it's already autom autom automatic pilot that when I hear something that it's not authentic, the radar goes ping, ping, ping on any level of my being. So when I'm working on a client, there is especially important because I'm a Diamond practitioner. So that means that the session is designed to activate my client's authentic self. I want them to be real. I don't want them to have stories. I don't want them to lie to themselves. I don't want them to be bullshitting themselves and others. That's the point. So because that's what I'm listening for, every time I witness on any level of my being, I hear it, I sense it, I feel it, I, I intuit it, I whatever it, that it's not in line with I am, the truth, I bring it up or I take note, mental note. Does that make any, make any sense? Hmm. A lot of work. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It's mm. just a lot of practice. But yes. it's not like once it becomes a second nature, it just is, you know, but practice, practice makes perfect, you know, and this is what I call, this is why we call, I call it path of mastery. It's a, and this is why this series and the, the armoring for us, it's a lifestyle. This is not a technique. And it becomes a lifestyle when I realize that it's a lot of work, that it's a lot of practice. So it, I have to do it nonstop if I want to get good at it, because I, it's a practice of being alive. And so it's not a lot of work. It's just being present to life. And so I call it a spiritual gym. I continually lift weights, you know, of spiritual gym. So one gym is listening ability to tune myself in. Another gym is hearing to actually be able to hear what you said. And where did you say it from? Another gym is to look at your body as you talk from the moment we say, hi, I'm Dan and you are whatever. Immediately, instantly, I'm observing the minute, tiny changes in your muscle, you know, in your, in your body, in everywhere. As soon as we touch, when we shake hands, energetically, instantly, I'm starting to get much, much, much more information about your emotionality, about your temperatures, about the, the, the juices, about all sorts of things. So it's just a second nature because I'm, in it this is the field that i started this is my passion i love people i love doing this so it's not a lot of work it's just a lot of life intensely lived yeah and i would <laughs> like to i would like to add to that as well this um ex experience comes through practice mm. and more experience comes through more practice and you know this with this little object here you know it's not like you know, I've done that hundreds, if not thousands of hours through my life practicing that. And I had hundreds, if not thousands of hours of sessions with people where I was practicing that. And when I'm sitting sometimes in a session or in a big group or like right now here, I have that in my hands. So I have constantly, constantly my feeling center activated. So I'm constantly in the in the sense of feeling and that opens up all other channels. And I, I, I have the, the, the practice through experiencing constantly tuning in. And it, it, it's not an effort. It's not work. It just becomes a second nature. And that's very um, beneficial in engagement, not only individual or in work, in relationship, in all walks of life. I have a different practice, you know, like if you could see what I'm doing right now, like my hand is doing this. And for the duration of the webinar, both of my hands are on my knees, gently rubbing my legs nonstop. Literally, I do it nonstop. And like Matt said, for us, this is this became a habit of being connected to reality and wanting to be in touch with reality. Let's have some more questions. We only have like 15 minutes left. Let's hear if yes, Veronique. Um, but to get to that point, you also have to unclutter yourself, right? Unfuck yourself. Yes. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. 
So you do, <sighs> you do have job. to do that. There, yeah, there's I'm the, going there's the biggest gym, you know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is yeah. this is what uh, uh, Sana, uh, Dian, and I saying. This is like a, it becomes a sport, you know. It's just it like it is a sport. <laughs> it, it is a sport. Just like you, just like you dedicate it to your sports. It's it, to your art, you know. It's just like uncluttering and un, unfucking yourself is a constant thing because there's always something to unravel. Yeah. And then when you finish on a personal level, then you go into interpersonal level and then they start unfucking the world, you know, so it never <laughs> stops really. That's why we are alive. We are alive to practice being alive. Joao, you had a question. Yes, uh, for, for both of you, actually, if um, when you are uh, consciously or unconsciously doing body reading, if um, do you use your five senses? Uh, in the same amount that to use the feeling, the inner feeling, or it seemed to me that you use more the inner feeling and what you receive. Everything. But you, you would say like both in the same amount, like the five senses and the feeling, uh, or or more the the input that you receive. Your your first then. Yeah. Okay. So basically, for me, it really to be honest and in integrity, it depends how present I am at that given moment. So if I am less present and I'm less present to body, but more present in my head, I'll probably be more visually checking and looking. If I'm more connected to my kinesthetic self and to emotionality and the energetics, then I'll probably be sensing more. It really depends where you catch me in a day, what's going on and who I'm with. And also, yeah, because I change, you know, it's like not always, unfortunately, I'm not a master yet. So not all set, you know, uh, seasons are engaged all the time but as much as i can yeah that's my five cents yeah yeah it's it's a it's a great question and the way how i would answer that from my experience is um it's including the five senses and and beyond that and sometimes it's more like in like an i would call it an inner sense and sometimes i it i get multi-dimensional structures pictures feelings uh, um, dynamics, the, uh, questions. Is, it, it, it's just like trusting what is really coming through that system and then um, being capable of responding to that and engaging with that. And uh, the important piece for me is that I never want to be right here when that happens. Sometimes I just check in and ask, so I have, I have an impulse here. How is that? Yeah. Uh, or, or in my body, I have this... Um, I have this 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 feeling there. So just like, is it mirroring something, or or I have a feeling coming up that is not really familiar to me? What's going on in you? Is there something going on? I just start to feel sadness when somebody is going through through a process. So it's just trusting what is coming up, but not wanting to be yeah. right with with the experience. Questioning. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. I love the honesty and the transparency. And um, yeah, just wanted to know if there is any training program to Portugal in the future. <laughs> Portugal not, God, but yeah. uh, um, Europe, yes. Mm. Uh, Maria uh, was sharing here and she's saying that sometimes people don't really want to be read and they're not really, definitely not want to be authentic in their lives. And then it's difficult to connect. And this is true. And I found on my skin and in my life that once I made that commitment and I made that commitment um, in my mid thirties or something like that to actually be authentic and real. Before then I was kind of slimy and wasn't really committed to being real. But once I did, then actually I started leaving many, many, many friends. And nowadays I'm only uh, actively connected with people that I consider friends who are actually on the same path. Otherwise, I'm not interested because I don't have a life to waste. So it really depends on your lifestyle, depends like there is no way I would work in the office or like in a normal business because I would just go mental because I can't keep my mouth shut. I would just basically I would be thrown out and burnt at the stake, you know, as a witch because I would just I, I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't want to play that game. So it really depends at what level you play your life and uh, and if you commit to, I mean, essentially, it comes from, are you happy in your life? I wasn't happy being out of 
touch with reality. So that's why I started committing to reality. So as you begin to investigate your life and, and seeing whether you are happy with your life, if you find that you are not, and that becomes more important than being at your work or having those kind of friends, then you're going to actually do the same choice. You're going to slowly over time, not in, you know, it takes time. You're going to start changing your life and changing friends and changing jobs and actually dedicating more of your time to people and situations, circumstances where there is authenticity as a value rather than lying, cheating, sliming, which is most of the outside normal world. Thank okay, you. So we have another eight, 10 minutes or so. So if you have another question that is burning, now it's the moment. Where is your own obstacle when it comes to awareness, body reading, being present? What's in the way of being the... Where you're not honest to yourself? Well, I have a question. It's actually not for me, but uh, we have a friend who actually can't feel her body. Cannot feel her body, did you say? Yeah, she cannot feel her body and it's she, it's really traumatic for her. And mm. funnily enough, she's a masseuse and it works through her, but she, she doesn't feel her own body. She, she's she got no... How, how does that work? How does that work? What? Well, the fact that you can't feel your own body. Let's, you know, if you don't mind, let's keep this conversation to body reading. And in, if she was here, we could talk to her. But it's a conceptual okay. because she's not here, so I don't. I would need to talk to her. Okay. So let's keep the, the questions based in within this group. But invited to a training or invited to do some diamoring with with one of our practitioners, that would help. And and by saying that. I just have prepared some things here, uh, so please feel free to take the link about. So, so I'm offering a, um, a, a free de armoring training discovery discovery call. So, if your friend would like to have a conversation, she can just jump on that call and have a 15 minute conversation with me, and I can see what I can do with uh, her or for her. And that's true for all of you. If you have any questions outside of this webinar. Uh, feel totally welcome to just like book this 15 minute call and uh, uh, have your individual questions answered and you might even have some questions about the upcoming de armoring training or it's, there's as well a link about the de armoring training so please feel free to um, take advantage of that so that was a uh, great moment to drop that in yes Janine please um I'll just jump in and be like what was the biggest thing that helped both you and Deanne start doing this better? Monsieur, first. Uh, I didn't actually, I was typing my email address for you also. If you want to have a uh, call with me, you can also copy my email address. Uh, so please repeat the question. Talking about uh, presence. The, huh? Yeah, the question was, what was the biggest thing that helped both you and Matt start doing this well, I suppose. I've always been doing it for lives and lives and lives. Like I've just, that's, you know, I, <laughs> I've always been doing it. I think, okay, okay. So like, what was the thing that- Yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. So for me, it was when I realized how shitty life, my life was how unexpressed, unfulfilled, unhappy, poor, just completely not alive. I didn't have a life on any level of my being. That's how I felt. So once I actually got present to that, then I said, then, is this really why you're born? Is this really it? So that for me was when I, I had enough of myself, of my own bullshit. 
So I guess that could be one turning point. There was many turning points, but I always, I told you I started when I was 17. So I, it, my whole life is to do with this, you know, people, me, mastery, life, you know, what is it all about? Mm -hmm. Two questions, who am I and why am I here on this planet that runs me my whole life? goes deeper, 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 never stops. Yeah, I was always good with my hands, you know, I just love touch. So when you look into the love languages, my love language number one is touch and being touched. And I was always good with my my hands and doing massages and body work. And I loved it all the way. And, um, and my kind of miss alignment was that I was really good in doing and wanting the respond back to get a validation. Yeah, so so I, I became masterful in giving that I can, could feel better about myself, that people could enjoy themselves. Yeah, and I was really burning out on that. And then I did in 2014, a somatic training, um, where this I was touching a lime this time, not a piece of wood, where that was clicking in this very difference. Can I touch for myself and feel myself? Or am I dependent on touching another person without feeling myself and get that response back to feel better about myself? Yeah. And when that clicked in for myself, I made this touching kind of my um, default of my nervous system. And that was coming back. I re I, I reconstructed, I relearned that in a, in a beneficial way that I then did only what people wanted me to do for them and to them. So I just like could chop out all this pleasing and giving behavior to belong and feel better about myself. I could completely let that go, but I had access to this as a superpower that I literally could use my hands in the most possible way. That's that's a pretty crazy benefit to doing some, some somatic oh, work. That was crazy. I, 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 I think I, we I, all I, wish we could just get rid of that. <laughs> just... I, I can promise you I got mad before I just found that with my hands. <laughs> All right. Any more questions last? I mean, actually, we can stay a little bit longer. I'm not actually, I've got nothing better to do. So if you want to stay a few minutes longer, then more questions are cool. But there are no, not that many questions is a good sign. We have delivered something and uh... I don't know. And if you have any more questions, there's always a way to connect with us and um and and reach out while you're thinking so there are two trainings coming up one training is uh in september just now in uh two three weeks in spain i'm running it is called deep in your presence now that thing is designed to specifically introduce people to ways of connecting with the subtleties of existence uh, within me and getting me as close as possible to the source and then practicing body work, practicing the armoring from that perspective, when I then Matuka put myself to one side and I allow the presence to work through me and to connect with elements. I mean, it's a massive, massive training and you're very welcome to uh, visit the armoringarts.com website and read about it. And then another one is our basic training in October, which is 11 day a uh, huge beast monster with three teachers and 10 assistants and it's like a life-changing i mean they're all life-changing but that's also coming up in october you're very welcome to read about that too and uh, we on both of those we work a lot on reading each other being authentic getting real letting go of stories and whatnots in order to realign and to mm. touch reality and I have this weekend a couples retreat in Sweden coming up. If you just want to jump on uh, the magic of how all that stuff works in relationship, um, please use one of the links and just make uh, make connection with me. All right. I think that's it. I would like to uh, Can ask... I just do a yes. final question? Yeah. Yes. Very simple one. In the, in the, the basic Yarmarine training, how many days do you um, reserve for sexual Yarmarine? You know what? I, that's I just not, that's about not it. possible just to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, do you want to go? Shall I? 
Yeah, so so before we do sexual dearmoring, we have six days, seven days of preparation. So we do a lot of uh, um, uh, trauma work, we do a lot of breath work, we do a lot of consent work, we do a lot of touch work. And before body the genitals work. are part on that on body work, we just uh, gradually uh, work through the body till people will feel comfortable and empowered and embodied enough that they have actually the the choice of the experience of, of uh, sexual dearmoring. So day six, day seven. Of and then there's about four or five days of that, if people want. Of, and of practice, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I was uh, thinking that uh, fearing that it was it would be like most of the training on sexual dearmoring. So no. From what I read, but now um, it just it, it landed very very well to to hear to hear this. Yeah. I mean, to give you a very brief synopsis of the training, the basic training is designed for people to experience and be introduced to the concept of the armoring. Sexual the armoring is just one part of the armoring, mm -hmm. a very small part, not small. It's an important part, but it's just one part. Mm -hmm. uh, we demonstrate and we teach you uh, different ways of the armoring the body. One is going to be through body work, actually touching the body. One is going to be through conversation or talk therapy, which is an extremely powerful way. And we do a lot of it, like hours and hours of that, where we in a circle, we talk, talk, talk to people and the armoring them through words. You're going to be introduced to the energy work. So the armoring the body without actually touching the body, but working on the energetic body. So the basic training, the promise of the basic training is that at the end of 11 days, everybody will know exactly what the armoring is and what it's not. And we'll have enough tools to start practicing on friends and family. Obviously, nowhere near you're going to be professionally qualified for this will take two or three years of training. But you will have a very good start and a very deep understanding of what it is and what it's not. Yeah, and there there are some practitioners who have already a practice who just like implement that what we teach into their mm -hmm. life uh, already, and then they just practice straight from the start. So there are yeah. different levels of expertise, of like uh, psychotherapists, uh, um, uh, actually even lawyers uh, introducing the the uh, uh, techniques into the practice, uh, body workers, uh, sensual masseuses. So basically, like it depends where you are, you can definitely pick up a lot of stuff that you can already uh, put into your existing practice. Mm. Thank you. Dear people, wonderful well, spending time with you. Thank you so much for your time, for your generous time. In and and half, that's yeah, I have a question because that is always good for you to give something back. Write in the chat a few words about your benefit, your takeaway, just like whatever resonates with you, just like to get that off your nervous system. Um, words of appreciation, gratitude, whatever goes a long way, or what would you like to have more of? Just like just just a few words that we uh, can say um, goodbye here. I really appreciate all of you being in here. So there was a fluctuation of people joining, coming and going. And uh, I'm um, feeling grateful that all you guys were here for this time and listened to us, what we are so passionate about. And um, um, I feel tingling in my chest. Excellent. You also feel very fulfilled. Yeah, this was very uh, engaging and cool. But you know, I'm gonna, um, yeah. Let Let's say goodbye for now. Yes. All right. So yeah. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening, and uh, see you at the next um, uh, webinar when it comes up. You will get a notification, and we're sending around the link for this recording. And yeah. we might see you at the the armoring training. Feel free to reach out. Yeah. Um, number one. Uh, love yourself. Ciao for now. All right. Thank take care. Bye-bye.